What is up, everybody? Well, Pride Month has drawn to an end, but funnily enough, being a part of the LGBTQ plus community and dealing with its day-to-day -day struggles lasts all year long. Yay! I mean, obviously, we've come a long way, and Pride Month is a great time for us to look back on the many people who came before us and fought for the privileges we have now. It's also a really good time to remember that we're not alone. And uh, on that note, I really wanted to make a second addition to the video we made back in 2017. So in order to do that, I enlisted the help once again of some really cool friends. Hi, I'm Quill. I don't have preferred pronouns. I use them all. Hi, I'm Leo. Him, he. Hello. I'm Terrence. He, him. I'm Paige. She, her. I am Joan. I use they, them pronouns. Hello, my name is Chandler and I also use they, them pronouns. My name is Talon and I also use they, them pronouns. And I'm Thomas and I use he, him pronouns. Ah, I'm still geeking out at all of them. I love them so much. <laughs> we don't represent everybody on the spectrum. I don't think that would be possible really in front of one screen. <laughs> we don't know everything, but we can speak from our own personal experiences and maybe someone will say something that at least one of you out there needs to hear. Maybe just by opening up about ourselves, it might help you feel more comfortable being you. All right. Let's get back to the Gaty Bunch. Yeah, and you're on. Woot! It's just so much queer power in here. <laughs> Radiating energy. Radiating energy. Kenny's got a close up. Thank you, Kenny, for being here. You're a true ally. <laughs> Will, thank you so much for fleshing out the set that we yes, have. Yes, Will! You did a bang up job! Yes, Quill! It was a collaborative effort. Yes. Quill, this looks so good. <laughs> Talon called it the queer corner. Oh, I love it. it sounds like a segment of Sesame Street. <laughs> so, you ready to do this? I'm so ready. Ooh, this is an interesting one. Who were your first crushes? Oh my god. Oh, no. <laughs> Can we do like celebrity crushes? That way it might be uh, people so that they know. They know. Okay. Yeah, but also cartoon characters. Oh! oh. oh. I got one. Bob will turn me gay. <laughs> she yes. had it all. She had she it all. the stem. Icon. <laughs> There's an evolution to like my crushes in Avatar The Last Airbender. Mm -hmm. I liked, I, when I was very young, I liked Aang. Mm -hmm. I got a little older and I liked Jet. And mm -hmm. then I got even older and then Zuko grew his hair out and then I liked Zuko. Zuko, yeah. You went from That's liking good, good boys to bad boys. Yeah. <laughs> Jet was the worst though. Jet, Jet was yeah. the worst. Yeah, Zuko for sure. Yeah. Oh, uh, Zuko. Danny oh, Zuko. Oh, man. Mine was Danny Phantom and Sam Man. Yes. Oh, yes. Sam. But also Johnny Depp. I know he's a human person. Yeah. But I thought Johnny Depp was pretty cute too when I was younger. Oh, and Ralph really? Macchio. I was so <laughs> into Ralph Macchio when I was younger. He's from the original Karate Kid, Kid movies. Oh. Yeah. And, and The Outsiders. He played Johnny K. Um, I'm going to pull up a picture. <laughs> I guess mine would probably be like Aladdin. That's oh, what I was yeah. gonna say. I saw Were you really? Aladdin and Jasmine. I was like, <laughs> yeah. Actually. We totally steered this into cartoon territory, <laughs> with fault. the exception of Joan. Um, any others? He looks like a child now. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> mine was. It's, it's funny because it was the first lesbian relationship on television. Willow and Tara and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh my god! I had a huge crush on Willow. Buffy is very gay culture though. Like the people I know who are obsessed with it are all gay people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we were talking about this earlier. It was like there are certain movies that you identify with, especially Disney movies. Yeah. So I was saying that I ask LGBTQ plus <laughs> people if they really liked Aladdin, Hercules, or both the movies when they were younger. Every single queer person I've asked so far has loved at least one of those movies, if not both. My theory behind it is the fact that it is someone who feels like an outsider, tries to conform to what society tells them that they should be, or tries to fit into society and realizes that the way that they are the happiest is by being themselves in the end. That's a pretty powerful thing, especially that a lot of queer people can relate to in some way. Those I do my... like both of those movies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next question, what introduced you into the LGBT? LGBT plus community. Like, how did you find out about it? Hmm. My mother is bisexual, so she dated a woman for like a day. <laughs> she dated no one, pretty much. So the only experience I ever saw was her with a woman, and then she also had trans friends. So like, I just never knew anything different. I think the first time I ever heard the word gay was from Ellen DeGeneres' mouth when she came out. I was like, what is that? <laughs> gay. Gay. That sounds like, nice. Oh. I'm gonna say it again. <laughs> I didn't know how to react to it, but I went off of what kids in my class all reacted to it and, and it was just all around very ignorant and negative. The very first time I heard the idea of there being something outside of the gender binary, I was introduced to that idea for, by uh, Oran High School. Mm. Oh yes. Yeah. And then my friend who I didn't know was genderqueer at the time told me, oh yeah, I'm genderqueer. And they explained that to me and then they went to the bathroom and when they came back I was like, that's me. <laughs> Thank God for that show. Mm -hmm. yeah. The way that I learned about the LGBTQ community was not through any form of media 
I was in school with a girl in fifth grade and I was 10 and she told me she was bisexual. And my first reaction was that I was surprised. And then I started looking into it and I was like, hmm, maybe that's me. And then my sister, my older <laughs> sister is trans. And when she first came out as trans, she was 16 and I was 12. I was like, well, I know that I'm bisexual. I need to learn more about my community. So I went and I was like researching trans issues and I was like, wait a minute, that might be me. Oh my goodness. So it was like meeting other people that I was like, oh wait, once I did some research, I was like, that's me too. All right, cool. That's great. My first experience of it was definitely in a negative context because I grew up in like a really small, like homophobic town. When I was younger, I was on the bus and we would ride with like the older kids. My friend Heather, she had an older sister who was in middle school and her older sister was like an open like lesbian and that was unheard of in my town. And so I remember just like being on the school bus and like, I would just like try and listen to her conversations as much as possible to like hear her talk about other girls and stuff. I was like, oh, weird. But, <laughs> <laughs> and then it wasn't until I really got into like high school, junior year, that I realized that I was gay. I was like really young at like the local flea market. Mm -hmm. This guy was like selling instruments because like I wanted a guitar so bad. And you know, I was a very like a boy, so he just was like, you're gonna grow up to like like guys, you know. And now looking back at it, I feel like he was trying to like say like it's gonna be okay. And my dad, because I mean, that's a big no-no, like in black culture, went completely ballistic. And I didn't know why. I didn't understand like why. And I just thought that was something wrong with me because my mom didn't want to talk about it. My dad didn't want to talk about it. He was just like, <laughs> like, you know, like really upset. And I just didn't understand what it was. So for the longest time, like it was something that I just kind of wanted to like not even rid like face, you know what I mean? Okay, so I looked up the hashtag. There's this one tweet from Thomas Sanders. It says, once again, <laughs> we can only speak for ourselves. Put this up on the screen. <laughs> we wanted to have a conversation about gender sexuality. So I think we should talk a little bit about gender and sexuality <laughs> for a little bit. I don't wanna. Does anybody else have a question? question I have one. I have trouble figuring myself out. I thought I was straight until I fell in love with my best friend. I'm a girl, she's a girl. So have any of you ever had a crush on your best friend or something? Love. Sorry, yeah, that sorry, is sorry like, it's too personal, love you all. <laughs> having a crush on your best friend so, is queer wait, culture. So that's right. <laughs> when I was introduced to the person, I just assumed forgive me, that he was interested in guys. He was not by any means, he is like straight. I just had to like fess up and be like, look, when we first met, I thought this, and it took a long time for me to get over it, but like, we're good now, so like, so yes, it, it does happen. I would say, if that's your best friend, I feel as though sharing that information with them, I won't say it won't be awkward, but if they are your best friend, they'll be like, Okay, I hear you out, mm. but here's a boundary. In some cases, they might be like, oh my god, I love you too, and then have at it. So, <laughs> yeah. If you tell them and they don't feel the same way about you, that can make a stronger friendship because then you learn more boundaries with each other and you learn to yeah, trust each other exactly. better. Yep. So yeah. then there's more respect that develops. Yep. Does anybody... Because of another question down. <laughs> another question <laughs> down. We're one step closer to curing homophobia. <laughs> Are you get people to feel that like bisexuality is not a phase. Honestly, I, there's really nothing you can say. I mean, people are gonna say what they want to say. It's all about you. It's all about like how you feel inside. Just listen to yourself, like phase, whatever. Okay, cool, but it's me. And you just gotta own it. And that's the whole thing about really this life is owning who you are, no matter what you like, you know what I mean? And also people act like phases are such a horrible thing. A horrible thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like people grow, people exactly. Grow, people like, change. And also, when people suggest that bisexuality is a stepping stone to realizing that you are either gay or either straight, I personally thought I was a lesbian and then realized later that I was bisexual. And it was because people told me what I was supposed to be and I thought, oh, well, okay, I guess that's what I am because everyone thinks that. And I didn't feel like I was allowed to explore my bisexuality sexuality until after I came out as trans even. Everyone's gonna have different experiences. Some people are going to think that they're bisexual and then realize that they are not bisexual. Some people are going to think that they're not bisexual and then realize that they are. Trust Life yourself. can be fluid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Life is so fluid. You mentioned about phases, and I think something that is really important about phases is that even though a phase might be in the past, or even if you're going through a phase, that doesn't invalidate that period. That doesn't mean that that period is like, oh, it was all a lie, or it's not yeah. real, or it's artificial. That's yeah. not true. That's still, that's what you felt at that point in your life. That's what was real at that point in your life. If it was true yeah. for yeah. you, then 
and you're allowed to yeah. own that that was your truth. Yeah. And, then, and if your truth changes, that doesn't fine. suddenly make it a lie. Your identity is not for anybody else. Yeah. 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 I always like to say, like, I'm still going to identify the way I identify, regardless of how anyone else feels about it. Like, I'm still going to be non-binary just because someone says to me, there's only two genders. Like, mm. that didn't change who I was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here, still being me. The other thing about my sexuality is it's not a 50-50 split. Yeah, definitely You know, not. you could be, like, 75% attracted to your gender and 25% attracted to another gender. You're still valid. You're still bisexual. Yeah, absolutely. In The Sims, Sims can date whoever they want. And <laughs> it Sims. means nothing to the other Sims around them. <laughs> this person asks, to any of your trans friends who've picked a new name, what was the process of getting used to a new name like? Did it feel weird or off hearing it at times? So I always say the same way that people who have known me for a long time are getting used to calling me a new name, I'm also getting used to hearing that new name and I'm getting used to referring to myself as that new name. Because there would be times where I'll be thinking to myself in the third person and be like, Elena, you can do this. And I'm like, wait, what? What did I just call myself? It's kind of weird. Like, I'm so used to my mom calling me by my birth name that when she calls me in the house and she goes, Chandler, come here. And I'm like, that's so weird to hear you say. <laughs> I used to worry that hearing Chandler and feeling uncomfortable meant that I wasn't really trans and that it was all this fake thing because if you're not comfortable with your name, then like, how does that make any sense if you're going by this name? But I just had to remind myself that it's also a learning curve for me. It's also a process for me. Yeah, no, yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it was like uh, very much like one person at a time. The first person that I asked to call me Joan was like just a coworker at like a, a t-shirt shop where I used to print t-shirts. There was definitely like this thing that was like a little odd about it but it was also so cool because it was so much less of a big deal than I thought it was which I think worked because it was a co-worker Ash has a great video about switching names so like you could go check out their video it's really good mm. I changed my name when I was 12 I was in the seventh grade and you know how seventh graders are so I like I laid down the law really firm it was a matter of retraining myself and retraining everyone around me by retraining myself so when people would call me by my old name I, I, it was like a head jerk for like 45 degrees and then I would readjust and go straight ahead <laughs> until they called me Quill. And it worked. Training my parents was a little harder, but we got there. I think that the most important thing is to just be cool with people who are still like learning it. Because yeah. there were people that called me by my old name just to poke fun. And those people I did not forgive. But the people that were like, oh, sorry, Quill. I would be like, all right, cool. You didn't mean it. Don't worry about it. Along that line, there's, there's a question that's similar to that. That was just like, how do I get people to use my pronouns preferred name? Because despite coming out many times, my friends won't. And I'm afraid to correct because I don't want to seem pushy or give them reason to make some stupid jokes over it. I personally am very bad at self-advocating. Like oh, when people too. call me the wrong pronouns, I am way too shy and non-confrontational to like stand up for myself. Yeah. So my advice has always been, if you have a friend that supports you, to go to them and ask them if they mm. would be able to have a conversation with those people. That way you're not the one that's put on the spot every single time because that's exhausting. I'm so there on the self-advocacy though. Like I let it slide so hard when people get it wrong and it makes me feel bad. <laughs> like something that can help is instead of just correcting that person, continuously kind of like putting a little bit of emphasis, just a little bit on mm -hmm. like when you refer to that person. Be like, and they. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> do that. Because then people will kind of be like, oh, something's going on here. I love when someone surprised me and they're like, I keep hearing you say they. Are they like non-binary? Like that's such a like, mm -hmm. huh. <laughs> I saw like a question that was kind of like, how do I not feel so alone and stuff like that? Because mm. not everyone has like a group of friends like us that yeah. they mm. can rely on and be around and stuff like that. And the most important thing is to like look for resources. Like you can look online. Kevin, let's drop some resources. <laughs> also like the uh, like LGBT crisis sign, which is like PFLAG and like the Trevor Project and mm. stuff like that. My school never had like a GSA, so we started one. And like I'm not saying like if your school doesn't like go start a GSA because that can be like a terrifying and not a safe space. And like it took a lot like for us to do that, and it was very scary. But at the same time, there might be resources at your school that you don't even know about. Like there mm. could be a GSA or something similar like that. And I think it's important to look for those as well. And also, it's okay to call the crisis hotline. It's all anonymous, and so that it makes it a little bit easier. I really enjoyed this conversation, and I feel like we could go all night if a lot of us didn't have things that we had to do. <laughs> but I did want to close out this video. What kind of advice we potentially would give our younger selves that might help them through their struggles. You made me go first, so now you have to go first. Ooh. You want me to go first? You gotta go first, yeah. I'm fine Thomas Sanders. I think the biggest piece of advice I could give myself when I was younger is you're not broken. This isn't a test and the way that you are is exactly how God wanted you to be, which was a huge question mark for me. I'm exactly the way that I'm supposed to be. So. 
that's my advice to anybody who might need to hear it, including my younger self. Well, that made me a little emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is very specific to gender. When I first came out as non-binary, I thought that I needed to look perfectly androgynous and I had to be masculine to cancel out my femininity and all of this stuff and I was like I can't wear makeup I can't wear the clothes I like and it actually led to me not even listening to the music I like I felt like I had to be this perfect thing because people already don't really accept non-binary people especially non-binary people who don't try to look androgynous mm. and once I realized these people who are going to judge me aren't gonna accept me regardless of what I look like or how I'm acting. Mm. I was like, I'm gonna grow my hair out so that I can have fun with it. I'm gonna wear all the makeup I want. I'm gonna wear all the clothing I want. I'm gonna listen to the music I want. I'm going to do whatever the F I please. <laughs> <laughs> because there's no way to pass as non-binary in our society. At the end of the day, people are gonna think what they're gonna think about you and you just have to do what makes you happy. We all die, so do whatever makes you happy as long as you're not hurting anybody. So my advice to myself would be you don't have to prove yourself to anyone. You don't have to look a certain way, act a certain way, or do anything to try and convince people that you're valid because your validity is inherent. You don't have to try and prove yourself to anyone. That's good. That was good. Yeah. Mine is for current me a little bit. Today I was feeling very, very insecure about my identity, like to the point where I was like almost thinking about like just not being in this video. It was because I'm at a point where I feel like I can't do a lot in terms of like hormones or outward experience expression because of fear for my physical well-being if I go out in public or because of certain family members and their faith cutting me out of their life. I then feel like the best thing I could do is distract myself from like a lot of my thoughts and feelings and just put other things at the front of my mind and I just almost have a general apathy about my sort of gender expression and I just try not to think about it too much and then in turn like today I was just feeling like no one would take me seriously. So I talked to Chandler a little bit. They basically told me something that I want to try and commit to memory, why would you make it up? There's almost this weird validation I get from dysphoria. Like if I like look at my body and feel grossed out by it and feel terrible all day, or like someone calls me a man or sir or something like that and I feel terrible about it all day, I'll sort of come away from that thinking like, wow, my whole day is ruined, but I'm not making it up. Mm. So that's what I got. It's really easy for me to overthink. And the thing Chandler said was just, how do you feel when someone calls you a man? I'm like, not great. And then they're like, yeah, sometimes that's all it needs to be. It can be as simple as that. So I guess that's it. It's just listen to your feelings and interpret them simply as they come. Yeah, a lot of advice for my younger self. But there was like a point in my life where I was talking to someone that I thought was like very, very like pretty and like very, very attractive. And like she kind of like stood me up, stood me up, stood me up. And it really, really like weared on me. And I was already in like a really, really bad place because she was so what I felt was out of my league. Whenever I finally like got away from that, I like punished myself almost by like jumping into a relationship that like I didn't want. I just felt so stupid for thinking that she would ever like me. Yeah. It just all like made me feel really really terrible mm. and so like it's just important to like not jump into something you know when you're in that kind of state of feeling like that it's very important to like know yourself before you can be with anybody else mm. it won't end well i would say to my younger self that it does get better and that as you get older your actions affect more than just you sometimes and it is important to be mindful of what you say and what you do i would tell the younger self i know you think you're weird get weirder mm -hmm. trust me you're gonna thank me in the end you know I mean? <laughs> don't hold on to people let people go you don't have to please no one but yourself just trust yourself keep strutting now <laughs> I would tell Lil Quill that you are loved, even if you can't always see the people that love you. Yeah, you probably feel like a space alien and that's cool. Don't be so worried about slapping a bunch of fancy labels on it. It's okay to just be yourself. I really like this. Yes, this is a good episode of uh, The Gaty Bunch. <laughs> I hope that that helps anybody out there that's watching. I know that there's lots of questions out there. I want to thank you once again, all of you guys, for taking so much time out of your day to make this video video happen, I really think that it will help somebody out there who needed to hear those things. Happy Pride Month. Happy Pride! Happy Pride, Happy Pride everybody! <laughs> Gosh, can I just say how thankful and lucky I feel to have such wonderful people in my life? Hopefully you enjoyed our talk, maybe gleaned some insight. At the very least, 
If you're a part of the LGBTQ plus community, I hope that our conversation made you more aware of the fact that you're not alone. We're all still working through things, learning, improving, and becoming more and more comfortable with our identities. So if you're confused, questioning, nervous, whatever the case may be, please know you're doing great. You're on the journey. It's not a race. You got this. We'll all be your little cheerleaders. Or dare I say, queer leaders. <laughs> and we're all super proud of you. Until next time, I love you, guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Peace out! Very nice. Group hug? I mean, we're all really stinky. Bring it in. Stinky, stinky group hug. I'm Pride hug. Yay. Oh, hug Yay. Yay. You look good today. You look really good today. Ooh. Oh my gosh. What do you do with Is your hair? New? Nice.